Hey, what's going on guys? Comic again Z here. Recently I've been asked about how to run Stockfish on remote Amazon Web Server instance. So in this video we'll go into the step-by-step -step explanations of how this can actually be achieved. So uh, you obviously need to have an AWS account uh, if you want to try this at home. I didn't create uh, uh, I didn't create one for my own because you need to go through a quite complicated very uh, personality verification process including the credit cards uh, uh, data as well I actually don't really need that so it was way easier for me just to ask a, a very kind and good, and good friend of mine to share his own Amazon instance we've been working together for quite a bit of time and then he dropped those instances but he has created a new one for me just for just to record this little video uh, on how to actually set up Stockfish on remote AWS instance. So, just a few words uh, regarding this the certain uh, instance that we're going to be using. So, if we just go to Amazon on its own, uh, there uh, there would be. Uh, I just just want to show you this. So, it's called AWS EC2, which stands for yeah. Here it is. So by default, it has 7, 750 uh, free hours, which is not that not that lot, but it's quite pretty okay for sandboxing, for like for playing around with this sort of a thing. So EC2 stands for Elastic Container 2. The idea is very simple. You just uh, uh, the more processing uh, the more processing power is needed to run your kind of app, the more uh, the more processing power is allocated dynamically. So that's the reason why this is called elastic container. So it just allocates more processing power for you. So you don't really need to think about things like scalability. So everything is done automatically for you. And this is incredibly good idea to consider to fit uh, this kind of chest engine running on the, on the remote server in the cloud. But obviously there is one little thing to mention here as well. That the bear that running the bear engine on the remote server it doesn't actually uh, uh, allow you to interact with this, like say from the browser interface. In that case, you'll need to establish some sort of web web application, and that is being discussed in great details in another video I've made not very long time ago. It's called uh, running chess engine uh, in the cloud, basically. So I'll give you a link in the description below, so you can have a look how technically this can be achieved. And now, without further ado, let's actually go for a demonstration of this kind of step by step guide. On how to set up Stockfish on AWS. So without further ado, let's actually start. The first thing we need is to clone the service code. So we're going to be using the latest development version from GitHub. So the most simple and straightforward way so far. Then in order to log into your instance, so here is the line I'm using here. Well, this instance is going to be deleted by the time you want to be watching this video, most likely. So you will be able to, uh, to reuse this also. It's private. It's my friend's one and uh, all the credentials are like really long credential data with, with, with full of security tokens and things like that is located in the file scrapers.pem and this is located in the current working directory here so i just log in there okay and currently i am at ubuntu and here is the ip address of this certain instance but again like as far as there is no http server currently running we can we can actually reference it so that would be a completely different story in how to set up that sort of http server and if you're interested i mean i might make some additional tutorials but just on my local system because linux is absolutely the same stuff that runs the the, the same ubuntu well in my case this is linux mint but uh, from the command line perspective it looks absolutely the same so i can uh, uh make a tutorial on how to connect stockfish and a simple web application to interact with just to build this proof of concept uh implementation how to run this engine in the cloud so if you're interested please let me know in the comment trees and we definitely can go for that so now let's have a look what we have in the file system so we don't have kind of like stockfish here so but we have the git utility so git allows us to run the git clone command and paste based in the source code for stockfish and it gets fetched from there so now we have a look at the file system now we have the stockfish so i can simply cd to stockfish okay i'm um, sorry cd to stockfish like this and have a look again so we have the source folder we need the source folder here so we go there and here we have a make file so now we need to compile if you don't know how to compile you just type make and it will give you some 
uh, applicable things. And I'll just try one of the most simplest ones. So I just run this portable and slow compilation. Uh, you can play around with different builds, but I just want to show you this kind of proof of concept here. So I can simply say make minus J build and specifying the 64 bit architecture. So this should be uh, working perfectly well. So it has just downloaded the latest efficiently updatable ne neural network that been involved in the latest Stockfish, obviously. So here it is. There's some configuration. So obviously, like whatever make file you can, so you can compile settings just like you do locally. And now it compiles all the files. Okay. So it takes a little bit of a time. And once it's done, we can actually run this and we will then be able to compare to compare those kind of results with uh, with those being available on my local system. I'm just, hold on a sec guys. Uh, I'm sorry, I just did something a bit wrong here. So yeah, uh, we just don't need to put minus J here. We just need to say build like this. This should be enough, yeah. I'm sorry for this, yeah. So we don't need to type minus J, it doesn't work pro pro properly there. Okay, and by the time it's compiling, uh, I can just I can just take yeah this latest downloaded Stockfish. So just to give you a comparison uh, of performance on my local computer and let's say on that remote Amazon instance. So I'll open the terminal here as well. So here I have. So on the right, I have my local stockfish, always on top. Okay, stock fish. So we'll go for it now and here. Okay, seems like it's compiled. So let's try, let's have a look if it is compiled. Uh, yeah, stockfish executable, here it is. So it's, it's available. So now we can run this as well. And this stockfish already running on this remote Ubuntu at IP, blah, 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 this kind of thing. So this kind of Stockfish is already running on the remote AWS instance, which is absolutely great. Okay, so we can have a look at the board on both sort of uh, instances. So on the right, we have my local computer. My laptop is quite pretty slow. And here is the Amazon Web, uh, uh, Amazon Web Server instance. So let's go for a bit of a bench. So yeah, we have the starting position. So Let's say we can go for, uh, well, we can run the bench on its own. So what, what to try here? Um, let's go for bench and I want zero megabytes for transposition table, one, uh, one thread. Uh, let's say I want to go to the depth six and I want the current position and go for perfed. So here we go, perf test the current position and no sir, so the time taken is this. So let's try the same here. I just copy paste the command. So really lots of interesting things to play around with. So let's say how different. So yeah, it seems like, uh, yeah, it seems like uh, Amazon Web Server is kind of twice faster compa compared to my computer, but uh, we can also try this a little bit uh, a little bit, in a little bit different way. So we can say, let's go for a fixed depth search. So let's say, I can say like go depth, let's say 18. Okay, and now it's searching and it's found the best move. And the NPS, I'm wondering about the NPS. So where is the NPS? NPS, here is the NPS. So 499, okay, so almost 500 nodes per second. Well, bear in mind the fact that uh, there is, I just make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, so here is the NPS, here is the NPS, so nodes per second. Uh, it's not that big because uh, efficient updatable neural networks are really uh, performance consuming sort of a thing. So uh, before they did this, it would, uh, before they, kind of embedded those efficient lab data neural networks. The NPS value was like more than more than a million nodes per second, but currently this is what we have. And just to give you an idea uh, regarding the capacity of this standard EC2 instance on Amazon. Okay, and also we can do the same here. So I say go depth 
18 and here is my local system and let's see how many we got here so NPS so here we have well but hold on a sec it's probably does it involve efficient updatable neural nets I'm wondering wondering does it involve it might not be it might not be involving the efficient updatable neural networks that's the reason that, yeah it's not very hold on a sec close to remote so I guess I just I just go for the compiled uh, yeah uh, let's compare the versions that are compiled using the same using the same sort of a delete the same commands because otherwise this isn't this is not going to be a fair comparison so you just go for make and let's take this one copy paste and like this so here we go now it would be absolutely the same so here definitely the efficient updatable neural network would be on the cards okay so let's have a look yeah it takes time but we'll now get done with this okay so let's run stockfish and let's go depth 18 okay so whoa interesting yeah so now it's even oh notes 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 hold on a sec yeah yeah now now this is more looks like a true so uh kind of 1200 12 12 1200 of thousands yeah so this is the number on my local machine okay and uh this is the number yeah let's take this one and this is the number on remote Amazon web server instance so it's yeah so it's around yeah it's yeah around twice faster actually but you just need to bear in mind the fact that if you have a single instance and if you're running uh, multiple threads that the processing file uh, power would be uh, getting down so that's another thing, uh, thing to care uh, to take care about to bear in mind so if you're interested about this sort of a possible pitfalls potential pitfalls that you can encounter if you want to kind of monetize this stockfish instance running on the remote Amazon server uh, you just feel free to check my video running just hanging in the cloud which would be discussed in this sense in a really great details Okay guys, so this is it from my side. Thanks for watching. Until the next time and take care.